Hong Kong. One of the most densely populated cities on Earth, known worldwide as a financial center and for its shopping, pollution, and fast pace of life. But in the green heart of Hong Kong, there is a magical place of beauty and tranquility. Kaduri Farm and Botanic Garden. Seven million people live here. But how can they live in harmony with their wildlife neighbors? It's a challenge. Part of KFBG's mission is to protect native species and their habitats. To stop poachers and the illegal trade in wild plants and animals. And to assure the survival of endangered species through captive breeding programs. The goal is to protect the wild places and their wildlife for the present and the future, to create a safe haven and harmony with nature. A new day dawns on Kaduri Farm. Agricultural staff are already at work on the tea terraces. Tea is native to southwest China and it has been grown and harvested like this for centuries. Sustainably and in harmony with nature. Tea is just one of a variety of crops growing in KFBG's agroforest. Away from the tranquility of Kaduri Farm and outside its protection, poaching of wild animals and plants is a threat. And Kaduri Farm plays its part in rooting out the poachers and their traps. Today, the fauna conservation team's Yorkie Wong is leading a mission in difficult terrain. He's here to help protect one of the world's most endangered freshwater turtles, the golden coin turtle. He's joined by senior conservation officer Paul Crow, an acknowledged golden coin expert. Hong Kong is the last place we know on the planet where gum chingwai, the, the golden coin turtle, is still successfully um, pairing and breeding in the wild. We do get occasional reports of juveniles and babies being found, the last just a couple of years ago. So we know we have a real responsibility here in Hong Kong to make sure this animal doesn't go wild extinct. Everybody reveres it as a, as a lucky turtle. So people know this animal, they're well aware of it, and unfortunately these interests in the animal have driven, driven it virtually to extinction. It's so sought after that the market prices have gone extremely high, so high that it's a massive incentive for people to try and trap the last individuals. We're joining forces today with the Agriculture, Fisheries and Conservation Department um, ranger staff to do a, a stream spot check to try and see if there are illegal traps placed in some of the key stream habitats. So far, the wild hasn't been a safe place for these animals. So we hope that sort of the extended effort over years by Agriculture and Fisheries Department and ourselves is starting to make the streams a safe habitat. We hope that if we go out today, we don't come across uh, any of these baited and active. This is a simple kind of trap that's placed to catch the turtles. Um, guys can trek into these streams and place 15, 20, and then maybe return later. And if they're lucky, they have a golden coin turtle that could be worth upwards of 120, 150,000 Hong Kong dollars. 
And that is a year's salary for many people. The golden coin is listed as critically endangered. With the stakes so high, the determination of Kaduri Farm and the government to protect it is crucial. A poacher's trap. On these patrols, any traps found are destroyed and removed. He's safe, at least for a little while longer. Golden coin turtles are valuable because there is a mistaken belief that they have very special medicinal properties. Sanchin even so, criminals make a lot of money by selling golden coin turtles and making extravagant claims about their medicinal value. Despite overwhelming scientific evidence that the turtle does not cure cancer, the demand is still there and increasing. As a result, the species could disappear entirely. So, to ensure it has a future at all, Kaduri Farm has set up a conservation breeding program. You got that? Tell you what, I'll find her. Now we know she's had eggs for a while. In a secure location, the hope for an entire species is being safeguarded. We've recorded eggs at the beginning of the month, so let's see if this routine weight check shows any drop. The program is supervised by Paul Crow and Yorkie Wong. OK, 1382. 1382. How's that compare? Oh, it has dropped 142 grams. Oh, hi. Let me see if I can palpate. This female is being checked to see if she's laid her eggs. She's done her job. All right. The eggs are removed to protect them from accidental damage. Possibly very valuable eggs in the ground here. She's coming back. She might actually be being protective. What are you doing? My eggs are there. Oh, just touched an egg. OK. So we were right. Whoa, not just an egg. So far I can see that looks like four. That's a good clutch already. It's very important at this point that we treat them very carefully. Can't the breeding program has been in full swing since 2001. And the hatching success is rising. That's the future of a species right there. Paul checks his precious cargo into the incubator room. We have to concentrate here for several reasons. There's uh, lots of steps to take that we have to get right and we can't make any mistakes and drop anything because that would waste the whole year, so. Each egg is carefully weighed. It's a 29.2 gram and... Uh, measured and numbered. Big one. Uh, that's egg, egg number 17. Egg number 17. This is a very delicate part of the operation. 
K number is 7880. Dropping an egg would be a disaster, but they need to get them into the incubator quickly. Egg number is 18. The record numbers, the date, not only serves to identify the egg, but also shows us which way is up. One day, when there is widespread public understanding and the poaching stops, these turtles will be released back into Hong Kong's streams. Let the incubator do its job. For now, the breeding program is the best hope for Hong Kong's native golden coin turtle. Whilst the fate of these turtles hangs in the balance, the fauna conservation team faces a very different challenge from another turtle species that doesn't belong here. Nearby, there's been a release of red-eared sliders, a hardy and aggressive alien species from North America. And they pose a threat to native stream life. People buy these mainly captive bred turtles specifically to release them in the belief that setting an animal free brings blessings and good fortune in this and the next life. This well-intentioned but misguided act causes suffering and threatens the local ecology. All exotics must be removed. The trade in exotic animals and animal parts is global. In parallel to the legal trade, many animal species are smuggled into or through Hong Kong. The fauna team has been informed that an alert customs officer has apprehended a passenger who has flown into Hong Kong with 400 Indian star tortoises all crammed into his luggage and destined for the pet trade. These tortoises, protected under the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species, have now been placed in the care of Kaduri Farm. It's an animal rescue service that KFBG provides free of charge. Less than half of the tortoises survived the journey. Cruelly smuggled without food or water. They're regarded as commodities, not living creatures. But now they're in the care of Kaduri Farm's veterinary team who are always ready to handle emergency admissions. They must first assess the health of each animal. Then they're weighed and given an identification number in order to follow their progress. What to do with so many confiscated pet trade animals is a challenge. But in this case, the team will find the tortoises' homes with people in Hong Kong who are authorised to care for them. All are microchipped, so they can be individually identified and therefore not sold illegally. The tortoises are handled with great care and compassion. But for the veterinary staff, events like this are becoming all too familiar. The illegal trade in plants, animals and animal parts is worth 20 billion US dollars per year. Numerous traders in the district of Shen Wan sell the ingredients for traditional Chinese medicine. Legally, it's a grey area, 
because some unscrupulous traders mix in parts of plants and animals that are protected under international law. It's a trade that's centuries old. But today, it's having an enormous impact on wild plants and animals. None more so than on sharks. The harvest of sharks and their fins is unsustainable. There are many lesser known plants and animals also on the brink of extinction due to the medicinal and food trades. Kaduri Farm is actively monitoring the trade and two of its scientists in the Shen Wang district are on a routine patrol. They often find protected plants and animal body parts sold as medicine. And here, the heartwood of the rare and valuable Aquilaria tree is openly displayed. The problem is identifying the source and legality of these products. Even the storekeepers do not always know the origins of the items. This is where Kaduri Farm's experts can help. KFBG's Conservation Lab is a state-of-the-art facility used to analyse the genetic makeup, the DNA, of plant and animal samples. By extracting and analysing DNA, scientists can determine the species and where it came from and thus whether it was obtained legally or not. Any rare or threatened species is identifiable. Like the pangolin, one of the most critically endangered species and the world's most illegally trafficked mammal, prized because of the false belief that its scales have unique medicinal properties. And the Hong Kong ladies' slipper orchid, collected illegally and found on sale in downtown flower markets. The pressure on the natural world because of this trade is simply unsustainable. KFBG's scientists extract and barcode the DNA of samples from the market and cross-reference the barcode against a worldwide database. For以我们尝试用DNA调性码技术来寻找真相。a seahorse's DNA sequence is compared to the database, revealing that this is an endangered hedgehog seahorse being sold illegally. Our work shows a very serious problem. The use of the sea horse and other animals is not sustainable. Cutting-edge forensic technology and techniques have revolutionized the way KFBG is able to operate in this difficult and often sensitive area. This is a lucrative business. Much of the trade is legal, but if illegal activity is uncovered, Kaduri Farm reports it to the authorities. Monitoring work like this largely goes unseen. What visitors to Kaduri Farm do see are its farming terraces, landscape gardens and native forest. And it's a haven for city dwellers, a place where people are invited to think a little differently about the world in which they live. 
For this reason, Kaduri Farm attracts major figures in conservation, like the eminent British primatologist and UN messenger of peace, Dr. Jane Goodall, who's taking a few days out of her busy schedule. I feel very fortunate that when I come to Hong Kong, I can come up out of the horrible pollution of the city into this oasis. I think what I've discovered in my 80 years is that everything is interconnected. So when you harm an ecosystem in one place, in some form or other, that is going to affect not only the people living there, but sometimes other people far away. But what's becoming apparent is that when a small, seemingly insignificant species becomes extinct, and this is happening all the time, as forests are clear-cut and due to pollution and things like that, uh, this can have a ripple effect. So that small creature may actually be the most important food of some slightly different and perhaps to us more important species. And there are examples where this has led to the deadening of a whole ecosystem, which then takes time to come back up. I've always loved the wild places, and it's the wild places where we find biodiversity, where we find all the different mix of animal and plant species that make up the different ecosystems. They are a spiritual refuge, and the wild places have a certain atmosphere that is very soothing to troubled minds. And in this crazy life we live now, the life in the city, rus rushing around, bustling, hustling, wanting to make money and more money, going out into the wild places is a way of reconnecting with nature. And I think that's very, very important. Reconnecting people with nature is the essence of Kaduri Farm's educational work. Nothing is more important than introducing young minds to the beauty and the bounty of the natural world. These children are on a course called In Touch With Nature. And there's no better place to start than the kitchen garden, where they learn where some of their food comes from. The task is to grow a plant of their own, and the first stage is to take a cutting. For some, it's a new experience to touch and smell a living, growing thing, seeing how a plant grows from the soil. It's something that the field workers tending these centuries-old tea terraces understand, but many of us don't. Some people have lost that connection with the land, but the links are being reforged. It's time for the children to fill their pots with soil. Learning to love the earth and the cycle of life that it creates can bring a lifetime of joy and satisfaction. Push the soil around your plants so that it sits nice and firm inside. The simple act of planting a herb is their first step to reconnect. Most naturalists can point to a magical moment in their childhood when they became enchanted with nature, and that moment often set the course for their life. And Kaduri Farm is just the place to experience such a moment. These children may grow up to be ecologists, artists, teachers, or even property developers. Can you eat these? Yeah, you can. Having been enthralled with nature at a young age should help them to make the right choices to protect nature as adults. To recognize that connection with nature, to feel it, is a precious gift. 
having planted their herbs, it's time to label their pots and admire their handiwork. The simple act of planting a tiny living thing has encouraged them to reflect on the day's experience. It has prompted Lizzie here to write a message to nature. Dear nature, thank you for everything you've given us. Like plants, oxygen and animals, I hope you stay well, so you can keep providing a lovely life for us and everything around us. Best wishes, Lizzie. The young are our hope for the future, and experiencing the magic of nature is a key to unlock their hearts and minds. It's a wonderful place for young people to come and be educated. It's uh, teaching people about the importance of organic food and not using these pesticides and herbicides that destroy the environment. And the work on caring for and hopefully eventually trying to rehabilitate the animals that are confiscated from the live animal trade, caring for the tortoises, turtles, other creatures that are being illegally traded. So Kaduri, farm and botanic gardens is, is playing um, an important role. It's one of those strong forces out there for, for good, for helping to make this a better world. And they have terrific people, wonderful scientists, caring, passionate and dedicated. And one of them is Yorkie Wong. His dedication to the captive breeding programme with golden coin turtles could mean the difference between saving or losing an endangered species. The program has been running for over 16 years with much success. And although the turtle is not yet out of danger, there's good reason for optimism. A successful hatching is a special moment for Yorkie. In the meantime, Yorkie and the rest of the fauna conservation team will continue to patrol the streams of Hong Kong. Kaduri Farm staff work tirelessly each day to conserve native wildlife, protect the natural world, and hopefully inspire the next generation to continue this important work. <laughs>